In this statics video, you'll learn to replace a system of forces and moments with a single resultant force and line of action. If you're using the Hibbler statics textbook, this is going to fall under chapter 4.8, Further Simplification of a Force Couple System. And specifically, I'm going to solve these three problems all side by side, so you can see that even though they look different, you'll follow the same general solution technique in all three cases. And that's going to be step one, to solve for the resultant force. This should be review that you've seen in previous chapters. Step two will be to solve for the total moment at your given reference point. And then step three will be to solve for the distance that identifies where that resultant force acts so that its moment about your chosen reference point is equivalent to the moment of the whole system of forces. So three problems, three steps each, let's solve them. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. If you're new to my channel, my goal is to help you get through the sophomore and junior years of your engineering program and take advantage of as many professional development opportunities as you can along the way. So when you graduate, you can land a job, get admitted to your first choice grad school, or be successful in starting your own business. In order to simplify these problems down to a single resultant force, first step's gonna be find the resultant force. Before moving on to step two, I want to double check that each of these answers makes sense. And the 84.5 degrees on this question actually looks a little bit problematic. Looking at the three forces in the picture, they're all generally pointing down, but 84.5 degrees is mostly pointing up. And the reason this happens is that my calculator can't tell the difference between positive 1295 divided by positive 125 and the case when both of those are negative because the two negative signs cancel out. So the way I'm gonna account for this is to specify that this 84.5 degrees is actually measured from the negative x-axis and not the positive x-axis. If you have questions about any of the vector addition that was just done, I'll post a link to my vector addition uh, video right there up on the top corner of the screen, and I'll also post it down in the description in the bottom of this video so you can review two-dimensional vector addition to get caught up. So now step two for all of these problems is going to be moments. We're gonna find the sum of moments about the reference point specified in the problem statement. So point A is directly horizontal through uh, all three of those forces, so their X components would all point directly at point A. So it's only the Y components that are gonna cause a moment, and then that allows us to use a scalar technique, just moment equals force times perpendicular distance. So I'm also drawing this symbol for a clockwise around point A. I'm gonna call the clockwise rotation about A positive, and then counterclockwise would be negative. Probably the most common mistake that a student would make at this point of the problem would be to multiply the 1500 times a distance of nine meters, just like was done for that 700 Newton force. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that a moment is, is already a moment, right? That 1500 already has the units of Newton meters. It does not need to be multiplied by a distance. So when solving for moments about point A, all of the forces get multiplied by a distance but the moments are just added as is. Do not multiply them by another distance. <music> if 
If only all of the forces we had in this class were strictly vertical or horizontal, this would be a much easier class. The most common mistake I would expect to see a student make on this part of this problem would be the distance for this 600 Newton horizontal force. Since it intersects that beam at the same point as the 200 Newton force, there's a tendency to accidentally use that same distance of one for both the 200 and the 600 Newton forces. So remember that when doing a scalar moment, force times distance, the force and distance should be perpendicular to each other. So the vertical force uses a horizontal distance, horizontal force uses a vertical distance. So looking at this third problem, the most common mistake that I would expect a student to make would be the location for where to find a moment. For the past couple of problems, we've been using point A, or just in general, there's a tendency to want to use the attachment point for where the object is attached to the ground or ceiling. For this problem, though, the statement says that we're going to be finding the line of action with reference to uh, point B along the horizontal member CB, not along the vertical member that's actually attached to the ceiling. So when finding moments, we need the X component of the 150 pound force with that vertical uh, perpendicular distance. And then for the 50 pounds, that vertical component of the force, along with that horizontal distance, again, all measured with respect to point B. And just like the last problem, the 500 is just subtracted as is. It's not multiplied by a distance. The reason it's subtracted is because I drew clockwise as my positive direction. The last step for these problems is to solve for the line of action. So looking at the drawing, is essentially finding this point X that measures the distance from A as to where this resultant force is actually acting. And fortunately for the geometry in this problem, this is actually a pretty small setup. We're just gonna say that the moment at A is going to be equal to the vertical component of the force times that distance X. Uh, we can ignore the horizontal component of the resultant force for the same reason we were able to ignore the horizontal component when solving for the moments to begin with. The horizontal part would pass directly through part A and not cause any moment at point A. And so now looking back at my drawing to see if this distance makes sense, 7.32 meters. If I looked at the distance, this would actually be more close to a point uh, around here and looking at the forces and moments on the original drawing that does seem to make more sense than the original red um, FR that I had drawn because the 700 Newton force and the 1500 Newton meter moment on the right hand side are probably going to dominate and that will move the resultant forces line of action further over to the right. So for this next problem we're looking for the distance for the line of action along AB and we have a force that's going down and right. So we're essentially looking for that distance y as to where the resultant force uh, intersects that vertical member. So measuring from A, the moments at point A will equal the x component of the resultant force times that distance y. And we can ignore the vertical component of the resultant because the vertical component would pass directly through point A. And you get a final answer of 2.17 meters. So let's go back to the picture and see if that actually makes sense. If that vertical height is 1.5, we're actually looking at a distance kind of up here. So that FR is actually completely above the frame itself. Looking at the forces that we started with, this does actually make sense. The 400, 200, and 600 Newton forces are all acting in the same clockwise direction. And since the 600 Newton force is already acting at the very top part of the column, if the 400 and 200 are adding even additional moment, then that makes sense that this force would have to be acting even further higher up in order to have the same equivalent moment at point A. And so this is not actually a problem. Your final answer does not have to actually be located on the particular beam or column that you are looking at. It can be further above as in this case. And for this last problem, we are looking for a line of action along member CB measured from B. We know that our force is going up and right. So I'm just going to give myself uh, these two values here. And in order to find that distance x, we'll say that the moment about b that we solved on the last part will be equal to the y component of the resultant force because the x component is going to pass directly through b. So we can ignore the x component. So just the y component 
times that distance x. And that gives me a final answer of 0.8245 feet. And that's kind of close to where I put uh, the red arrow there on the drawing. If that 500 pound feet moment were not there, its distance x would be much larger. It would have to shift much further over to the left in order to have the same equivalent moment as the two forces in this problem. But that blue moment is actually counteracting them. It's rotating in the opposite direction. And that acts to move the line of action closer to point B. On the last problem, the line of action was very far from the reference point because all of the forces were causing moments in the same direction. In this case, when different forces and moments are counteracting each other, that will act to move the line of action much closer to the point of interest. If you learned something from this video and are interested in watching more like it, please consider subscribing to my channel so you can see each new video as they're released. YouTube's also going to put a couple of links up on the screen right now for videos that it thinks you might want to watch. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, they're probably not any more boring than this one was.